you went to WWE. You're in developmental. You're in Deep South. We'll get all to that. But mm-hmm. I guess if I brought this up, I might as well talk about it. And then Deep South. They moved a bunch of guys who were ready for TV almost. No, it, it I'm got, sorry, Deep it South got closed. closed down. Right. Like out of nowhere for us. Well, we I think were, a lot of people might have saw it coming. Oh, no? Well, I was completely oblivious okay. then because I'm just like, when it comes to like that kind of stuff, I'm just like, la, la, la. Like the less Lord knows the better. Right. So we were actually in the middle of a training class. And the office like walked in and they were like, stop. Everybody go sit on the bleachers over there. So we're all like, oh shit, we're all getting fired. And uh, they were like, we're shutting this place down. Everybody go back home, take a break for a couple hours, come back here, take the take the ring down, get everything out of here. And if anybody, if I hear that anybody uh, uh, steps foot in this building after today, you're fired. Jeez. And we were like, wow. And then, yeah, there was like, there was myself and, um, oh, I was going to say Brett and Brian Majors. Yeah. Zach Ryder Hawkins and Kurt and Ryder, Hawkins. Ryder, yeah. Maybe Jay Bradley and... And Festus and uh, Slam Master Jay. Festus, yeah. Oh, and- Oh, yeah. Oh, my Gordy. gosh. Yeah. Ray Gordy. Yeah. yeah. And then everybody else went down to Florida and started FCW. Well, because and then I got signed to OVW. And at the same time, th- so th- that group went to OVW. I happened to go to OVW. So I was the newcomer at the same time that that whole group were the newcomers. Didn't Al pull... Wait a minute. I'm having a flashback. So Didn't Al you? pull you and I aside and give us the whole... This is what... I think he... I remember when we got there, he pulled us aside and he was like, look, this is no bullshit and blah, blah. He kind of gave us like the quick little overview of like, this is how things go. This is how I did it. I think it was you and me. Maybe. Wait, I kind of remember that. All I remember is that we ran the ropes together. We did crisscrosses and neither of us wanted to stop. We- <laughs> do you remember that? Because it was like our first day I remember of doing that with Katie Lee, actually. It was our first day. Of- so I had heard a story oh of like you, like the first person to stop is like, it's like you your, suck. It's your test on the first day, right? And so, like, we were both there the first day, and I was like, "Fuck!" And like, we both just didn't stop, and we ran forever. And I was like, "Oh, well, somebody had to have stopped first. I'm gonna guess it was me. I think it was you. Sure, yeah, yeah I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, but, like, I had this weird test in my head of what. Well, maybe you didn't know of this test, but like, I hadn't heard of this before. I think Punk said like him and Ken Doan like it was like a weird thing that they made each other or whatever. Well, and we so, would have to like run the ropes for three minutes sometimes in deep south. So you were ready at to the go. end of practice, and that was like. The longest three minutes of your life. Did you get in crazy shit because of those things? I mean, I heard the horror stories of deep. So I, um, I completely tore my like my ACL exploded in January two thousand six, and um, I was misdiagnosed by this terrible Georgia doctor. And then, luckily, just being in WWE, they sent me to. I got an MRI to Andrews or whatever. Yes, right. So and Tommy was the guy well, in top relations luckily, at the time. Dude, that's. But I mean, if you're ever gonna have an injury, like you can't go to anybody better to be fixed up than dr andrews right. i would think but i mean not luckily like you're in wwe go to dr andrews he's the best He'll oh yeah you. right yeah yeah so i had to get an mri because like i just didn't like this doctor because he was like oh it might be your acl it might be your pcl it might be and i'm like look this is like very important like figure your shit sure. out so i had to go get an mri and i came back I and i might be a doctor i might be a dentist i'm not really it sure. was in the parking lot of <laughs> yeah. where deep south was so which i don't know how we're like in mcdonough like georgia nicest yeah place in the world. which none of us had ever heard of before we had to move there um and I had to go get an MRI done and I came back and I remember Dreamer told me like, look, like I'm, I'm just going to give you best case scenario. You're out for a few weeks, get you a little brace and you know, whatever. Worst case scenario, you've torn your ACL, you're out for like six months to a year. And of course, the first thing you're thinking is, oh my God, I'm going to get fired. You know, that's the first thing you think because I've been hurt. Yeah. Cause just, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person to like put over. I don't like to put over being hurt or anything like that, even though, like, my leg was completely, like, I couldn't even feel it. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I got the MRI back and showed it to this doctor, he was like, yep, it's your ACL. And I was like, I don't believe you. (laughs) Because it just, like, because it was like, no, I can't get the worst news ever from you. Right. You know? So then I ended up driving, like, three and a half hours to Birmingham and went to go see Dr. Andrews. And five minutes later, he told me the same thing. And it was just like, world crumbles down around you. So I had surgery March 1st. And then I was, I, I pushed myself. So like the best shape I got in was actually through rehab because I put on some weight afterwards because I was in a straight leg metal brace from my hip bone to my ankle for a month. My leg w- hadn't, hadn't even bent for a month after surgery. I was just laying, I remember just laying in my bed and just looking at my ceiling like, oh God, everything sucks right now. And I couldn't sleep at night because I was just laying around all day. So I wasn't tired. I couldn't go train. I'm in McDonough, Georgia. Yeah. Luckily, my parents came down for two weeks to help me out. And um, then when they went home, my sister came down for two weeks too. So I had like family with me and uh, 
I was back in the ring by like the end of September and I was rehabbing in a really, really great pra- uh, place in McDonough. I had a great uh, trainer named Joey and um, four hours a day, four days a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I got in ridiculous shape. And uh, that that was like the best time I got in shape was after rehab. <laughs> but I mean, I heard like those the the training that they would have those guys do down there was just wild. Like it's like a lot. You, like you said, three minutes around the ropes after a whole day three of training, or four hours of and, training, and squatting yeah. and standing on the top rope. Now I know that I know that the guys have longer days at like NXT now. Like they're there for twelve hours a day sometimes. Yeah, apparently, and we were like we were it's three to four hours for us at the time, but. I guess it yeah. doesn't sound bad anymore. I don't know. So, yeah. uh, but I do want to talk about because um, I do believe this podcast is kind of like how we overcome and how uh, you know striving to get to where we want and the best things and for our career. And obviously, these people in college were uh, all telling you the wrestling. You know, you had your list of people and and the fact that you moved to Louisville and then get fired seven days after uh, three days. Mm-hmm. Three. Day, yeah, I don't know why I said seven. Three days. Heartbreaking, right? Yeah. And I and I have a after a move. So you went, you bought a, an apartment, or yes. you signed a so, lease. So so they so they shut Deep South down, and I was actually the last one to get up there. Like I know the majors got up there real quick because uh, like they because OVW was doing house shows. Like we only did three. We like <laughs> we never did. Like we literally were just in that building and in our apartments. Like right. it would like that was it. So once that stopped, like when you're in a two and a half year bubble, and then all of a sudden it's just like Beh, you're literally like. What do I do with myself? Yeah. You know, like for a while it's like freedom. And then you're like, wait a minute. I have like, where's the structure that I was so used yeah. to. So I got there and it was just like, I I'm super awesome with like, um, being able to like control myself and my emotions and my you body and everything now. I like the idea of you just going, I'm super awesome. Did I just say that? Oh, I'm super no, awesome. I, no, but I just want to say, I just not I'm, say anything afterwards. Period. Yeah. I'm yeah. super awesome. So guys, and that's it. Uh, I'm super awesome. <laughs> Sorry, as, but that's all I thought. Of. I had I had like a panic attack when I went to OVW because it was just like before, I was the only the first the first before I before I ever went there because I was probably there. there yeah, I was yeah. probably there for like a day or two before I did the one training class, the one show, right. and the one tape review. Um, because it was just a lot because we didn't have a lot of time to like we all had to get out of our leases, we all had to find places, and and it was just like it was so far away too. Like I don't know Atlanta to Louisville, and it was just like got to get all this stuff up, and I only had like a little car and. Like I didn't get so actually Drew helped me. Um, Luke Gallows, d- d- yeah, Festus, whatever, whatever, <laughs> what Doc, whatever his name is today. Um, he helped me up there, and uh, the guys were doing house shows, and I was like, I was worried, like, oh my gosh, am I supposed to be doing these shows? But I don't have my shit together here, and I was trying to like get my stuff together while worrying about like, am I supposed to be doing this? And I don't, nobody's like told me where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do or anything. And I ended up having like a mini panic attack. And I remember like lying on the floor of my living room, like talking to my parents and I was crying and I was so stressed out and I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And I, I just hadn't like, I was just a really bad time. And my parents were like, do you want us to come down and help you? Because neither of my parents were working at the time. And it's 11 hours from where they were living, like two hours North of Toronto to drive to Louisville. And, um, they ended up driving down and they drove down, um, I want to say, like, uh, when was OVW TV Wednesday? Right. I want to say they drove down the Monday, because then I did the training class on Tuesday. So, like, they came down and did everything for me. They literally built, like, gave me a life in a day. So I was able to, like, go to the one training class I did. Like, they, like they had the cable. makeover or whatever? Yeah, like, they had the cable guy come. They went and bought me a washer and dryer. They set it up. They set up my, like, my dad hooked up my TV and everything. They bought me, like, a, a table and two end tables. They got me a couch. My mom put all my clothes up in my closet for me. She cleaned out the refrigerator and put food in it. She cleaned out all the cupboards and drawers, lined them, put my cutlery in, put my, my plates and everything in, um, got me, like, a table and four chairs for the little kitchen like and I came home and just like everything was done and then they were I think the Wednesday we had the show and so they stayed a little bit that day just to like get everything together and then Thursday was tape review and we went to tape review and uh then I was like I was back in the apartment for a couple hours and I remember I was just laying on my bed just like ah like just trying to like chill out and um, my mom called me. I want to say it was like 7, 7.30 at night. And she called me and said that they had just crossed the border from Detroit back into so Windsor, they Canada. Your, they had left your place. Yep. They just they literally came and set everything up for right. me. And it was so amazing. And they had just crossed the border back into Canada. And like a half hour later, Nova called me and told me that I was getting released. And I thought it was a joke. Right. 
I did because one of the times when I was actually going to TV, Nova called me like I was getting fired. I was like, oh my God, Nova. So when he called me, I thought he was fucking with so you me had again. So you had almost a joking relationship with him? A little I've known bit? him since I was 19. He would come up and do a lot of indies up in Ontario. So I met him when I was like really, really young. Mm. And uh, he would always just call me Williams. Williams, what's up? I'm like, what's up, Nova? Um, and he called me. And I was actually, to my knowledge, was supposed to be going to ECW that following Tuesday. So this was like a Thursday. And he called me up, and it was like, I want to say it was like 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. And, um, you know, Williams, whatever. And he's like, I just, like I'm so sorry. Like, I just want to let you know you're getting released. And I'm like, ah, okay, Nova. Right? And he's like, no. He's like, I'm serious. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Like, you were that other time. Like, right. when I was going to TV, I'm like, I know I'm supposed to go to TV on Tuesday. Like, you know, what's up? And he was like, he was like Williams, listen to my voice. Do I sound like I'm fucking with you? And I was like, are you serious? And he was, yo, know, creative has nothing for you. And I guess he was supposed to actually call me at nine o'clock that morning. Like I probably shouldn't have even been at that tape review day, but it took him all day it, to right? call me. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't do it. And um, uh, yeah, I was, and I couldn't believe it. And then after I got off the phone with him, I can't even remember what I was feeling. I think I was just numb because I was really burnt out. I had just had like an emotional breakdown like four days prior. Right. You know what I mean? But I was still like, you know, WWE, the dream. And, uh, and I called my parents and like, I'm like, I just got fired. And my mom was just silent and she just went, what? <laughs> and I was like, and then I told her what happened and she was like, do you want to come home? And I was like, yeah. Stopped on a dime, turned around. And they had already been driving eight or nine hours. Oh God, Stopped on a dime, went... turned around, crossed the border back into the States and drove back to Louisville. They got there at like 4.30 in the morning. We rested for a couple hours and they helped, like, I was actually able to give everything back that we had bought because I really only had it for, like, a day or a day and a half. I just lost money on, like, delivery fees. Um, and then I lost, like, 400 bucks on my apartment because of, like, the down payment. And I was literally, I wasn't even there for a week. Huh. And literally my parents, we gave everything back. They packed me up and I went back to Canada. 